Welcome back everyone, Grogen here with Land of the Vikings, so today we're just going to go through all the stuff that you need to know at the start of the game, so we're just going to hit new game, and this brings us to our setup page, so we have got our village names, where you can just randomise it if you want, or you can just type it in, depending on whatever you feel like doing, uh, you can edit your banner, you've got your different colours, and then at the bottom we can change how our flag looks, and sometimes the stuff won't fit on, and you can just use this little slider to... Put it the size that you want. And then we are going to go and have a look at the maps. Small land is perfect for beginners. The map size is small, the resources are high, the distance of the resources is very near, so you don't have a lot of running around to do at the start. The valley, the map size is big, the map resources are normal, and the distance of the resources is far away. And you can just go through the maps. We are going to go and just start on the small land, just for the tutorial stake. I would suggest having the tutorial selected if you are new to the game because it does guide you through quite well at the start. So I'm going to turn this off for now because the pop-ups will annoy me. So we're just going to go straight in and I'll see you there. So you load into the game and you've got your map and you get little objectives. This is saying increase your village population. Down on the bottom left here you've got your objective tab and it says we've just got to reach 40 villages. And our reward for that is silver, resources and fame. So the rest of the tabs down the bottom here, we've got alerts, no one is working at the minute, so that's our main alert. We've got our objectives, which we've just seen. We've got messages, which we have none of. Villages, it tells you the families, it tells you the population. So we've got 21 people, we've got 18 adults, 3 kids, and then it tells you men, women, children. And then at the bottom, you can search your villages and see what they're all up to. Then we have our management tab. In this, you've got your resources, which shows you all the stuff that you've collected and made so far. We have the jobs. It tells us what everyone's doing. Right now, we just have all 18 people are labourers. If they're working age, they start off as a labourer. And you can, change, you can change all this yourself. So we can change from labourers to builders. And as you see there, we had a builder. It takes one away from a labourer. So we will be changing that soon. And then we've got our ships, which we have none of, and we've got our buildings, which is just our carpenter. That's the only real building that we have at the minute. Down the very bottom left, we've got the tree of life. Now, this is like a talent tree system. Um, you start off, let's move this down. We start off with our basic one there, the settlement of the Vikings. A new village is founded, God bless the village. On the right-hand side, we have got this one here. It costs us one fame point, one tree of life point. And that makes our villagers work 1% faster. So early game, this is quite good. So we can explore that. And then we open up a second one, which they work 2% faster. So I'm going to explore that one as well. And then on the left-hand side, the villagers are happier. Now, early on, you don't have much to make the villagers happy. So happiness is good to start off with. So I'm just going to do these two as well. And that leaves us four points, which we can do the transition to settle life, which gives us a field, a granary, barley granary windmill and brewery but we can leave that for a minute so straight away we have got two houses two poor houses it tells you who's living in there we've got a longhouse in the longhouse you have a working priority it tells you how many population you've got and how many families you have a priority for cutting trees and stone mining right now we need both so i'm just going to leave them both on two but if you find yourself running low on stone you can raise your stone up you can lower your trees down and vice versa so right now we're just going to leave them on medium over this side we've got another poor house and then this is our carpenter now no one is working at the carpenter's house so it tells us there the advantageous talents is power so if we click on this we can filter that by power now Fridgear has got 2.2 .2 power but he's 46 meters away, so he's quite far away if we want him to work there. We can go down to two and have Sigbjorn, and he's only 23 meters away, so that'll up produ productivity a little bit. But we can have two people anyway, so I'm going to pick the top two for this one. And then this place starts off as closed, so if you click on there, it opens up, and now that will start producing timber. But for that, we need to get some wood. So if we click our little select tree, select trees to cut icon, we just click, mouse click over this and drag, and we can cut down all the trees that are close to our village. If you notice where the trees are, if you do not build on them, they will grow back, and that really does speed things up early on. Eventually, you probably will have most of these houses, and you'll be cutting the trees down miles away. 
So again, let's do the same with the stones. We can take the stones. There's a few close by, so we will just take these for now. And not have people walking too far. Now, the first thing I like to do is get some roads down because the road speeds up the speed people walk. So I'm going to start off maybe around there and just come around the front of the houses and the other buildings. So this will do for now and then I'm just going to do one going from his front door to the road. Now you will notice that the houses cost, uh, the roads cost silver to build. And we do start off with quite a bit. We've got 180 left so that's quite good. So the first buildings I like to do is food. I like to get me people fed and not go hungry. So I'm looking at the, the gathering. I'm looking at the gathering hut. So this is the building where edible fruits and small amounts of medicinal plants from the forest are collected. So if we click on this, it gives us a little productivity. So we want somewhere that's got 100%. So all down here is quite low. If we go over to the right hand side there, we got 100%. So I'm going to just stick that just below these trees there. If we hold down a Z key, we can rotate the building. So we're just going to stick that right about there. And then I'm going to extend that road just so it comes to the front of the building. Now... If you look at this, there's nobody working. We've got no builders. So if I change this up to, say, four and click on workers, we can add people to do work. So we've got four people who are going to now start building this house. I'm just going to press play to get things moving so people do actually start cutting some trees down. And they will go off. They'll start chopping trees down. They'll start breaking the rocks up. And then they'll start delivering them over to here. So next on the list, I'm going to go and do the hunting hut. And again, this has a productivity tab. All the way up the top there is 100%. Down here is quite low. We are going to want the hunting hut somewhere up in the trees up here. And we will want to build a road going up there. So I'm going to do this just over to the right on the side there. I'm going to rotate it a little bit. Because I want to have our buildings coming around that way. So if we do this and then I'm going to grab the road. And it's a little bit more awkward to see because it's in the trees. But let's get the road coming up. Where is it? <laughs> Lost it. Okay, so there's our building. We're just going to do that road right to the front door for now. And then, after that, I want a marketplace because... Our marketplace is where food is stored and where villagers shop. It should be in every village. Silver is earned with every purchase. So everything that our people collect, like the gatherers, the hunters, all our farms and stuff like that, the marketplace will sell the goods to the people. And the people will generate us money. So I'm just going to put this right in the middle of our town for now. I'm going to just stick that just here. And now we've got three buildings and we've only got four workers. So I'm going to go and click into our management tab and into the jobs. And I'm going to split the laborers and the builders 50-50 for now. So if we have eight of each, we'll get eight people cu cutting down some stuff and we'll have eight people building our buildings. Now we can look specifically at people and find out what they do. So if we click on this lady, she's called Eljot. She has a look tab of 1.1 so she's just above average she's not very strong she's 0.7 she's not very fast and she's average intelligence so this will determine where you want them working she is classed as a dwarf a person who is unusually short stature and account she's fat a person having a large amount of excess flesh uh, she's a girl she's got poor clothes and she's eight years old so she's only a kid so that gives us a mother and a father that tells us their stats too. So let's close that list down. So we are, we're, we need to work on 40 villages. So what we could do then is get some more houses. You start off with poor houses until you unlock more in the talent tree. So we're just going to put some down on the bottom here. And if you notice, if you get close enough to the road, it gives you like a little free bit of road there. It lets you build right up to it. So we've placed one down. I'm going to get a different house just for a bit of variety. And then the same again. We can just place that down. And if you hold shift, it gives you like a copy. So you can place another one down. But I'm just going to leave them two for now. And then we're going to build a little bit more of a road. And I'm going to come down this way down here. Just so we can build the houses coming around. And work down towards the water where we will eventually build them some ships. So now that we've got this done, I'm going to just build a couple more poor houses. And again, I'm just going to change one for variety. Get another one of these small ones. 
So now you will notice it's just gone dark and the people get unhappy in the dark. So if we go to our building menu, we've got our decoration tab. In the decorations, we've got fire pits, grand torches and pillar torches. These illuminate the night time. So I'm just going to put a few fire pits down and we'll put one there, one there, one in the middle of them houses. Each one costs us five silver as well. So you do have to watch your money situation. I'll put a couple out here. And let's do a little bit of variety. I'm going to put a couple of the pillars up instead. So we'll put one over here. Again, that's five silver. How is our building coming along? This one hasn't started yet. And we'll put a little light on the corner there. Okay, so everything is moving along okay. I'm just going to fast forward this so we get stuff a little bit quicker for now. And as you will notice, people are collecting the wood and the stone to build our gathering hut. Now, if we want this to be a priority, we can just click the priority button there and they will focus on this building before they do any of the, any of the others, which is really handy. If you need houses because you've got homeless people, prioritize some houses. And as you can see, the trees are getting cut down now. We're getting a bit more room to go. Now, let's go back to the decorations on these. We have different kinds of decorations. We have barrels, which increase the storage space of some buildings. So if we click on this, we don't have any buildings that it um, shows yet. I'll wait until the marketplace is up and do that again. Each decoration has a little icon in the bottom left and it tells you what the icons mean on the left hand side. So the square under them boxes tells you it increases the storage space of some buildings. The little flame increases the light at night. The roads make it easier for village. Uh, the road sign makes it easier for villagers to find directions and increases their walking speed. The little diamond makes the village look richer it's the installation next to the houses provides happiness the shield increases the defense of the village and this one increases the yield of the fields which we don't have any of yet okay so our gathering hut is complete but the little icon above says no one is working so if we look at the advantageous talents again we need people with speed and we need people with luck so if we click on this i can click on the luck icon so Cormica has got two and a half luck, but the speed is really slow. So I'm going to look down for someone a little bit better. They're also quite far away. They're 64 meters away. But if we do odd, he's got 1.9 at once. That's a little bit better and he's closer to. So we'll click this one. And then I'm going to go and pick one for speed mainly. And we're going to pick it. Hmm, let's pick Isgerd. Isgerd looks a good choice. Now they will go off and they will start looking for fruits and medicinal plants. So next up, our hunting hut is done. And this one needs people with power and luck. So if we click on there and look on power, I think Lagertha looks like a good choice. We got 1.6 and 1. And then we'll pick the next one. We'll try luck for this one. Okay, so Cormacher looks like a really good choice as well. That's 2.5 luck and 1 power. So we'll choose that as our second person. These buildings do not need to be opened. Them, they will just work while it's daytime. Everyone tends to sleep overnight. So if we go back down into our decorations, we could choose a shield. And we could add this down somewhere just as a little decoration. And it will improve the defense of our town. You can rotate them to see which way you want them to face. So we're just going to stick one there. We can also do stuff like a target board, which will add defense. Which looks pretty much like the shield to me, but, you know, it works. Right. There's scarecrows, which you can add on your fields. Uh, there's little trophies, what you can have standing up. Weapon racks, broken carts. Now, if we click on to, say, cart A, you will notice that our huts have got a little circle on them. If we stick these by our huts, it increases the storage space. So we can hold more stuff in them buildings now. Okay, so now some of your buildings are starting to come together. And if we go and have a look at our carpenter's building, you'll notice that he's, he's chopping wood up into planks. Now, our limit is set to 60. So once he gets up to 60 planks, he will stop until more come. Okay, so now our marketplace is done. And we want people with speed for our marketplace. I guess the quicker you can sell your stuff, the better. Okay, so we can have four workers in here. So if we click on this, click our speed tab. We're going to pick the best four people with speed. Everyone seems to be quite close to this place. So that's not too bad. So if we click on that, click on speed, we're going to pick Sigvat. 
Eddie. Legatha. And is good. So this tells us what resources we have in the marketplace, what people can buy. So right now we don't have anything. So no one's going to make any money from this. But now we've got all our first set of buildings up and constructed. I'm just going to make another little bit of a road coming down the back this way. And I'm just going to do a bit of a grid just so that we can have people walking around a little bit quicker as we're building some of this stuff. Okay, so next up I'm going to make a warehouse. And I'm going to put the warehouse quite close to the marketplace because I think they're going to store each other, store stuff quite close together. So we'll get that building. Next up I'm going to place a well so that we can give our people food and water. So I think I'm going to put this over by some of the houses there. I think that'll do fine. I'll do a little green area around it where it provides water. So when we have farms later on, you're going to want one of these by your farms to water the fields. We are going to need a woodshed. Now the woodshed is quite important because the winter will come and people need the wood to, um, to heat their houses. So it is a good idea to get this down quite early. So I'm going to just go and stick this. If it'll fit, I'm going to put it right there. So we've got our warehouse and our woodshed coming. Now these people do cut the trees down quite quick and as you can see some of these have grown back already. There's some little ones starting to come. But you've got to remember to keep cutting trees down because they do cut them down really quick. We've still got plenty of stones for now but I'm just going to get these other little ones there. So now that we have got all our basic buildings down we're going to go back into the tree of life. And we're going to unlock the transition to settle life. Now is the time to settle down. The crops must be planted and production must begin. So we're going to explore that. It's going to cost us three points and we've got five. And that unlocks. Um, we can dig too deep which lets us have a mine, a stone pit, a stone cutter. Which we will need the stone cutter when we want to start getting boats. Because you need the dressed stone. So that is something to think of. That costs three to explore. We've got two. So it depends whether you want to use your points on the crop's durability and the field growth speed. We can now do fields. And with the fields, you choose how big you want it. So let's see, where do we want this? I'm going to put this down here. And we're going to just drag the fence along. Pull it out. Back down by the road. To there. And then we close it off. And then when we've got the field, we just select it. And then we have to choose what we want on there. So we're going to pick wheat for now. I'm going to do two fields. I'm going to do one wheat and one barley. So we'll click on that. And then we have to plant it. Now we have no one working on the farm either, so we can add a farmer. Um, the advantageous talents are power for par farmers. So I'll click on there, we're going to get Frody. And I'm going to get Azulf, because we're going to have two fields, so I think two farmers should be enough. So we go back to food, pick another field, and I'm just going to do one next to this one here. Going to bring that right up by the houses, back to the road, and close it off again. Then we'll click on this, select barley and plant. Okay, so our warehouse is done. We need people with speed and it's got no workers, but we can have three. So let's just open this up, pick three workers. We haven't really got much in the way of people with speed right now. So we'll just do all three of the people that we've got. Eventually, people do die, people leave. And you do need to replace them. So let us have a quick look at what our population is looking like on our jobs. We have got no labourers currently. So let's just change that to three labourers and three builders. Now the idea for us will be we're going to need, because we keep giving people jobs, that's why we're running out of builders and labourers. So stuff is going to start coming really slow. We need to wait now until we get people joining our village or until people have babies and they grow up. So if we look at the top of our screen there, we've got our wood, we've got 6 wood, we've got 60 timber, which was the limit that we set. We've got 100 stone, we've got no dressed stone, we've got 25 silver, and we've got 62 meals. So we're doing really well for food. And this is what we've been waiting for. Newcomers will arrive to your village. Newcomers were seen coming towards the village where they came from. They were attacked by looters. Several families, including children, were able to escape. Since they couldn't bring any of their belongings with them, They've had to leave everything behind and at the end of the day long journey they reach your village and need a place to stay and food. They want to join your village. So we can let them join. Fame is earned and it could lead to new events. Or we can tell them no and we lose some fame. So we're going to let them join anyway because we do need people. So now we've just gone up to six labourers. So I'm just going to add one more builder and keep five labourers. 
and we're gonna just keep going. We've still only got two fame points. You build up fame by having more people. So now that these new people have joined, what you can see is we have homeless people, so we are gonna need some more houses. So let's build a few more poor houses and we'll do them down this side over here. So we're gonna just stick one there. I don't think there is any um, any difference between these buildings apart from the visual look of it. I like to have them a little bit old, like not straight just because it looks nicer. But yeah, them three houses I think that should do. So let's see what our objectives are at the minute. We still need to reach 40 villages. How many do we have? So if we look at our population, we are on 33 at the minute. We've got 13 old, uh, 13 men, 11 women, 24 adults, three kids. So yeah, we're still, we're working, we're working. No one does stuff in the night. Everyone pretty much goes to bed. So you might as well fast forward for the night times. Down the bottom right, you've got your speed. You can pause, play. And then you've got three fast forward and speeds. Every so often you will have problems in your village. So we've got a settlement problem. The newcomers have caused a settlement problem in the village. Foreigners set up tents wherever they could find a free area. Some villagers said these areas are theirs even though they appear empty. There's chaos in the village and everyone is complaining about this. You can drive the strangers away. The villagers will be happy. The newcomers will be unhappy. And the newcomers can get sick if they continue to sleep outside. We can banish the strangers. We lose a lot of fame, but the villagers will be happy. Or we can promise a new home. And we are building houses, so let's promise a new home. We want more people anyway. So we have a new objective to build two houses, which are coming anyway. We were prepared for that. So before we finish for the day, we're going to go onto the roads. And I want to build another little road coming along this side. We are quite low on silver, so I've got to be a little bit careful with this. This is pretty much going to take everything. We've got three left. But the reason I've done this... Is I want to go into our food tab and I want to get a cattle ranch which I can't actually fit in there okay so we've got a cattle ranch there and we can place this right there by the road I'm gonna do it on the bottom corner actually because I want to extend it a little bit so then we can extend our field the bigger the field I'm assuming is the more cattle you can have so opposite that one I'm gonna go and do a goat ranch and we'll put that just about here the ground is a bit too bumpy for that one there. Okay, so I've had a few little issues with the bumpy ground there, so we couldn't place that. So I found somewhere where we can put it, which is over here. And we're just going to extend that a little bit as much as it'll let us. And then, again, we're just going to wait for these to build. And then we will be able to slaughter animals for food, which is going to come in so handy again. Our little buildings are coming together. So going forward from here, you are going to want to set up on the sea. You're going to want a fishing hut, which you will just be placing on the pier like this. Build yourself a little road when you've got enough money. Now where our fields are done, you can just click on this and you harvest the field. Once the field is harvested, you can plant it again. And then you just repeat the cycle until winter when all your crops will die. So it is quite important to get your farm set up quite early, I believe, in this game. Okay. Okay, so this farm is done and we can replant it. So we're going to stick with barley and plant. So in our warehouse now, we've got 24 leather. We've got 24 her 21 herbs. And we are still building our cattle ranch. Once the ranch is done, we can... Fast forward this. Once the ranch is done, we need to get some workers in there. So then basically, we've got pretty much everything we need at the minute to... What I'd do from here is I'd start building more houses. I would wait until we can unlock the mine in the Tree of Life, which is three points, but we've only got two. Um, so yeah, just keep building houses. And there we go. We have our cattle ranch up and running. So if we click on our ranch, we can add a couple of workers. We need power and speed on our workers. So let's click on power. We're going to pick on this guy here. He's got 1.9 and 1.2, which is pretty decent, you know. So then let's see what this one's got. Oh, Lagertha has got 2.3 speed and 1 power, so she's pretty good as well. And as you can see, we have got 5 animals out of 12 that fit in our field. So we can bring this up, and I'm going to just slaughter 2. And then you will see, they go over and they chop up the animals. They'll get us some leather, and they'll get us some meat. And then when the goat one is done, which is hiding away behind the trees over here, let's cut some more down so we can see. It'll be the same, but you get wool from the goats. So this is still in production. 
and that'll take another little while. I think this is a good place to leave you to it now. We are getting there. We're getting there. We just need to add more houses, build more villages up, and keep progressing. Every so often you will get some natural disasters, which can... The earthquakes are quite fun. <laughs> you get you lose a few buildings, but it's, it's okay. It's quite good. Oh, before I go, up here on this map, you have a, a big stone area. When you unlock the stone pit, that is where this will go. It'll go on top of this little big stone rock. It's quite far away, but that's just one of them things. Over here, you will do the mine, and that's where you get your coal from. And then up here, you will get your iron, I believe, off this section. So you can tell by the different colours on the map. But yeah, uh, that's a pretty good place to leave it for today. Everyone, thank you so much for watching. I hope this has been helpful to you. If it has, please hit that subscribe button. Check out the other videos. Hit the like button. And pop some comments. Let me know, did I miss anything? And I'll catch you all soon. See you soon. Bye.